does the optical out from the CD player come directly off of the laser? This question comes from Jerry in Phoenix, Arizona. I know that the laser beam is reading the CD layer when, and taking all the bits off. Um, does the bits, do the bits come from some later stage of digital conversion and then back to optical? Do you notice any differences between optical connections and digital such as AES, EBU, or others? I think this is a good question because the quick answer is no. It does not come directly off of the laser. It would seem so. You've got a laser beam. You've got a spinning disc that's going to, what, 600, 600 RPM on a CD? And you've got a laser beam that's reading the pits in the lens as, as they go up and they go down. If it, it's the height, and there's a photo sensor below that. So the far, farther away the pit is, and, and is it the pit? Yeah, it's the, 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 the valley, and then the, the land is the, the, uh, the peak on that thing, if I have my terminology right. And if I don't, all my friendly chickens out there, bark, 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 I'm going to start going and, and telling me all about it. And thank you for that. I, I know I make a little fun of, of, of people because sometimes, you know, this, the, the, the group gets to be like a, uh, you know, a, a sewing circle or, or a group of <coughs> agitated chickens because I'll say something that isn't quite correct. But that's all right. Please forgive me, my friends. And you get the idea. But the laser comes off and goes into his whole series of, uh, of, of circuitry. I mean, there's, there's error correction circuitry. There is a, a type of a buffer, typically, that goes in. And this buffer came about, oh gosh, a long time ago. So if you're shaking the thing or, or, or there's any kind of disturbance to the laser mechanism, um, it, it'll hold that and then go back and look again. Sometimes, uh, like in our CD transport, the Perfect Wave transport, we used a system called, um, uh, what was it? Well, it's, it's like exact audio copy where uh, any kind of error, if it senses an error, it'll go back and instead of using a, um, a, a type of error correction, the Solomon Reed error correction system, it uh, actually goes back and rereads the data again. So it'll read it twice, come up with the best solution and, and then uh, the best answer, and then use uh, the, the CCIR corrections or uh, the, the types of correction that uh, are necessary inside of a, a CD player. And they're usually very accurate, which is kind of interesting. But it goes through a lot, goes through a buffer, and then in ours, we put it into a big buffer because we have a, a separate output clock that eliminates jitter. So if you use a jitter-free free, jitter clock on the output and then you have a big enough buffer, then the data coming from the laser on the CD or DVD, whatever you're reading, can come in, do whatever it needs to do, get stacked up in line, and then spit out in, in, in our own time frame. Now this is important because some discs uh, take a lot longer to read than others. A, a, a damaged disc, for instance, you got a lot of scratches on it, that's slower to read than a, a brand new disc. And we never know what speed the digital data from that laser is coming in. So we buffer it up, we get it all organized, cleaned up, ready to go, and then we output it with a jitter-free clock. Now that's not something most CD players do. In fact, I think I believe we have the only one that actually does that. And it, that technology we call a digital lens, which focuses everything down to one perfect point uh, that's jitter-free, and then we output it through a clock. Now, so that data, just to answer the question, yes, it comes off from the laser, but then it goes through a whole bunch of other stuff, and finally then outputs it to a little optical toss link. And toss link stands for Toshiba... Uh, yeah, I think it's Toshiba Link, yeah, because Toshiba in invented it or came up with that uh, plastic version of the the original ones. Now, the first ones I ever knew of were eight, called AT&T Glass. 
Now those were glass fibers and they, they have very high bandwidth. Toshiba wanted to make something that was a lot more affordable for consumer players, so they came up with Toshiba Link, which is Toslink, and it's a very low ca cost plastic device. All of those, whether you're using Toslink, optical cable, or coax, which is the, you know, we sometimes refer to it as SPDIF, and uh, co uh, um, balance cable, AES-EBU, uh, which is the, what does it stand for? Audio Engineering Society, uh, European Broadcast Union. That's what AES-EBU, and SPDIF stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface. So, man, we sure love our, our acronyms, don't we? In any case, uh, all of those use a type of coding that we best know as SPDIF. And, and SPDIF, the Sony Philips Digital Interface, is a biphase Mark II coding system, fancy words for essentially a way to multiplex the I squared S data which is the various clocks, the master clock, the bit clock, the word clock, the data that are inside of a CD player. Uh, the, so there's multiple lines of data inside of a CD player, and that's called I squared S. That's an I squared S bus. And those, those lines of data with all that stuff is then multiplexed down into a single output stream uh, that is called SPDIF, the Sony Philips Digital Interface. If it's balanced, it's still SPDIF, but now it's got a, it's got a, a positive and a negative polarity, and that's AES-EBU. Coming out of the optical is still SPDIF, but instead of being on a wire, it's now optical. It's all the same format. The only differences we ever see is like what we do, we actually give you the I squared S output and we do it through an HDMI connector. And that's better because that way everything remains separated. We don't multiplex it down and then uh, demodulate the multiplexing and redistribute it back into the DAC. Hope that wasn't too technical. I apologize if it was. Thanks.